Hi everyone, my name is Trevor Jones from Astro Backyard. Tonight is a special night. It's what we backyard astro photographers refer to as prime time. Okay, I just made that up. It's not only a clear Friday night, it's the day after new moon, and it's the Friday before a long weekend. That means I can take my time and set up my full deep sky DSLR astrophotography rig. And right now, that includes a William Optics Fluorostar 132 and an Ioptron CM60 mount. Because of the Astro Backyard blog and YouTube channel, I get the amazing opportunity to demo new telescopes and mounts. I never know what's coming next, and to be honest, it doesn't matter. Because it's the process of taking deep sky images that I love most, and that's what keeps me going. The challenges along the way make processing that final image that much sweeter. So join me tonight in the backyard as I capture a brilliant cloud of interstellar gas with an open star cluster within it. The winter targets won't be around much longer and then it's on to galaxy season. Tonight, let's photograph the Rosette Nebula. I want to talk about something new from William Optics. This guy. This is the Diffraction Spikes Batnoff Mask. Uh, this is the big boy right here, the big pizza pie for the 132. And I used it tonight. I was blown away with how bright and how long the star diffraction spikes were. Uh, this is great news for DSLR astrophotographers because that was one of the advantages of CCD was you could crank up the gain and uh, seed star diffraction spikes on even uh, you know medium brightness stars. You can now do that with a DSLR with this thing in live view. I happen to choose one of the brightest stars in the sky, a bright orange Betelgeuse in Orion. Uh, seems to be a favorite of mine. And man, the, the star spikes were almost, went the width of the uh, display screen. And then making, uh, fine tuning the adjustments in focus, you see that flat bar going in and out and you get it right in the center. So this is brand new, patent pending from William Optics, the Diffraction Spikes Batnoff Masks. Check them out, you probably don't need one this big, or maybe you do, I don't know. The other thing you might have noticed was the four inch rotator I've got on the 132. So that big rotator ring lets me turn the camera easily in any orientation that I want and lock it into place. It's got the measurement guides around the edges so you can really fine tune uh, your imaging. It's a nice upgrade. Uh, honestly, it's an upgrade that I, if money was tight, I probably wouldn't spring for. Uh, but then again, I wouldn't be using a FLT 132 either. Uh, it's definitely out of my price range, but I continue to use it because uh, of people like you watching this channel. So William Optics is a big fan of Astro Backyard and uh, William's an awesome guy who Actually, he reminds me of myself, the way he talks about the hobby. He gets excited. He goes on astrophotography trips. He sends me pictures. 
Uh, so I really believe in what William Optics is doing and uh, I'm not, I don't get paid anything from them. Uh, they do send me products to try out so uh, I just really think they have a good thing going because William believed in me when uh, a bunch of the other telescope suppliers didn't and uh, he's been very supportive so thank you William. Alright so we're in focus now and we're gonna get up and running. I'm just in here in PhD. I'm going to make sure that the clear mount calibration is on. I just click the little brain icon here and then uh, I'm refreshing right now. I'm going to use the auto star select and start the calibration process for PhD which will take no time at all. I'm co connected directly to the uh, Optron CM60 mount so I'll be gui pulse guiding tonight. And if this looks a little different than you're used to seeing, I'm here in Backyard EOS. Going a little old school here. This is what I started on. Uh, let's take a look. If I click on the Frame and Focus tab here, you can see the star moving around a little bit. That's because uh, PhD is doing its thing. Uh, but so I'm framed up nicely on the Rosette Nebula. I'm going to actually take a little test image here. We'll do a seven second exposure. It's going to be blurry, of course, because PhD is moving the uh, mount around slightly. It's just about done here. You hear the camera click. And... Oh yeah, it looks blurry because, like I said, but... Uh, so that's the Open Star Cluster NGC 2244 inside the rosette. Uh, that's... Look how blown out this frame is uh, at 7 seconds. But um, that, of course, is because I'm set to ISO 6400. For my imaging session, I am going to scale that down to a modest ISO 800. We're going to take 40 shots that are 180 seconds each. Duration 180. With a 5 second pause just to let that sensor cool down a little bit in between subs. We've got dither on. And uh, yeah, as soon as PhD is done, and it seems to be guiding right now, let's look at the graph. Oh baby, look at that thing. Okay, well, we are off and running. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, the pop's fine. How much was that one? Oh, okay, yeah, perfect, I'll go for that please. Uh, green peppers, mushrooms, and um, do you have blue cheese dipping sauce? Thank you. Bye. As you may know, myself and Steve from Ontario Telescope and Accessories do the Astro Backyard podcast together. So I hope you're checking that out and listening to those episodes. Uh, actually, me and Steve are headed out on a little, uh, not a road trip because we're flying there, but we're going to NEEF 2018, the Northeast Astronomy Forum. Now this is the world's largest astronomy and space expo. They've had some incredible speakers in the past like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. There's going to be lots of vendors there with uh, telescopes set up and mounts and new products. It's basically, uh, I'm going to be a kid in a candy store when I'm there. So I'm flying out there. The event takes place on uh, April 21st and 22nd. Me and Steve are going to meet up out there and have some fun. I'm going to shoot some videos, so hopefully you watch that, or maybe you're already going to the event, uh, which would be even better because then uh, I can, you know, we can shake hands and talk uh, astrophotography. It's really nice out there. Easily the best night for observing of 2018 crystal clear and pleasant too. You can't ask for better than that on a Friday before a long weekend. 